Once again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Crossings, a ministry of Calvary Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Dwight Lapine, and I'll be your host this morning as we get started in teaching you what the Bible says, not only about eternal life, but how to get to know God daily, moment by moment, in a personal way. We trust that this connection would really help you have a peace and a joy as you come to know Him and believe in Him. First of all, I want you to know the greatest tragedy of the Christian, ho Christian holiday, Christmas holiday, is not so much the commercialization of Christmas, but the trivialization, triv how do you say that, trivialization, um, making it, it's underneath, I can't see it anywhere in here. Can you come get it, find, find it, sir? Um, where the trivialization, the, the problem is, is that it's such an important thing that Jesus Christ came to this earth to die. Thank you so much, Gene. Appreciate it to die on the cross for us, but this world wants to take and make that unimportant to us. If you look at a world today, they take Christ out of everything that has to do with Christmas, and everything is about Santa Claus. You get tired of listening to every Christian song or Christmas song that you hear on the radio about Santa Claus, and every movie that's on, whether it's Hallmark or whatever, every movie is about Santa Claus, the son of Santa Claus, the brother of Santa Claus, the mother of Santa Claus. <laughs> it's all about him and how he's losing his power and how he gains Christmas again, and everyone believes in him as Santa Claus. And man, you just have to believe. You remember this man? Angel Clarence, Angel Clarence said, every man's life touches so many other lives, and when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? George Bailey, as you know, had a real problem, and he thought his life had no meaning, and he wanted to end his life because he owed money, and he didn't want to have a scandal and go to prison. His wife and his kids would be better off if he was dead. Clarence your brother Harry, Harry Bailey broke through the ice and drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie. Harry Bailey went to war. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You see, George, you've, had a, you've really had a wonderful life. Don't you see a mistake? It would be to throw it away. And again, the idea is every man's life touches so many lives. And so George Bailey, of course, says it would be better if I had not been born. And Clarence says, don't say things like that. Of course, the point is, what would life have been like if you had not been born? So George Bailey, of course, finds out what it would have been like, what Bedford Falls would have been like if he had not been born. And again, this morning then, what we're talking about, what would it have been like if we use that same thought, what would it have been like if Jesus Christ had not been born? It made a big difference if George Bailey had been born, but I'll tell you this, that it makes a much greater difference. It is equivalent to atomic bombs falling in every major city because I'm telling you what, the difference that that would make with lives dying and many lives perishing is nothing compared to the billions and billions and billions of people on this earth that could perish and go to hell without Christ's death and having no way, absolutely no way, to be saved. So I'm going to start off with just some of the ideas from, from Luke chapter 2, verse 11. We already read this to you. Glory to God in the highest on earth, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. But I want to start with that thought, unto you. I want you to understand that Jesus Christ did not come to Bethlehem. He came for the sake of you and, and me. He came to us. It wasn't a question of coming to the earth. It was a question of coming to us. And every single person on this earth has Jesus Christ as the one who came to us for unto you is born, not unto the world, not unto Bethlehem, not unto Israel, but unto you is born this day. And it doesn't matter where you live or how long you've been alive or, or whether you lived 2,000 years ago or today. He came unto us because he came to his own. His own did not receive him. He did not come to the earth. He came to his own. And that just means unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior. If you take Christ out of Christmas, of course, you take Christ out of the ability to save. There is no salvation. There is no Christmas. There is no presence. It's just another day of the week. December 25th did not happen. 
There is no decorations, there is no Christmas, but that's not the most important thing, as you know. The most important thing is there is no Savior. There would be no hope for the future. There is, no, there is absolutely no hope for the present either. But if, there's, if it's only about Santa Claus, Santa Claus is about giving you presents at Christmas time to every good boy and girl. Again, not to bad boys and girls, but to every good boy and girl, he comes to give a present. And you consider that with the hope of a future that you do not have without Christ. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ. And I'm going to start with that thought, thought, Christ, because if he is not born, then the Jewish people do not have a Messiah. And they talk about Jesus Christ coming yet in the future, but Jesus Christ will not come a second time if he did not come the first time. The first time is a prerequisite to the second coming. The second coming will not happen if Jesus Christ did not come the first time. You understand, he came first as a Savior and then as a Lord. He must first suffer and enter into his glory. The suffering must happen first before Jesus Christ comes in his glory. And so if he does not come as a Savior, he is not coming as a King. He's not coming as a Lord. And so the prerequisite has to take place. Jesus Christ had to come back first as a Messiah. If Jesus Christ did not come, then the Word of God has many prophecies that did not take place. Micah 5.2, In the city of Bethlehem, but thou Bethlehem, the land of Judah, though thou art little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me. And that is a prophecy of the coming Messiah. That scripture did not take place. Isaiah 7.14 did not take place. If Jesus Christ did not come, then there's many, many scriptures that are not fulfilled, which means the Word of God has holes, which means that you cannot trust any of God's Word. This idea here in Matthew 2.11, when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child and Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. I will share a lot more about this, but worship is not about the Old Testament. Worship is about the New Testament. There is no worship without the coming of Jesus Christ. You have no reason to worship there is no worship without that. Now, please understand when you think about this, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We beheld His glory. Beholding the glory of God did not take place in the Old Testament. There were times when people did see the glory. They saw the glory in the parting of the Red Sea. They saw the glory in the the pillar of fire and the cloud that went before them. They saw some of that. But for the majority of the Old Testament, only one person one day a week or one day a year would see the Shekinah glory when, in, when he went into the Holy of Holies. The remainder of the people in the Old Testament it did not behold the glory of God. The glory of God was not for them to see. It was invisible. It was not seen. It was in the temple. And that's the only place you saw God's glory. And no one was able to enter into the Holy of Holies so that no one saw it. But when Jesus Christ came, he, we beheld His glory. And again, that's when worship begins, when we can see the glory of God. Let me just share with you some of the attributes that God has revealed about Himself through the person of Christ. If Christ had not come, there would not be a revelation of God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But God commendeth his love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. What I'm saying to you is that in the, rev in the death of Christ, that is the revelation of God's love. And even though God loved us in the Old Testament, loved the people of the Old Testament, he did not demonstrate it to them. They did not realize that they could not understand God's love apart from the, the, the birth of Christ and his death. If Christ had not come, then Christ would not have died. If Christ had not died, there would not be any revelation of the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And again, you don't have the begotten Son without the giving of the begotten Son, and that begins at the birth. So there would not be any revelation of the love. There would not be revelation of God's glory, as I mentioned already, because the glory is revealed when He came and He dwelt among us. The Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us is the revelation of the glory of God. And I know I'm traveling fast here, but this is important for us to realize that God says that was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. Now just picture it today. We have Christmas. We have all these lights 
Man, you, you go into Menards and you buy lights for your house and you get them at a good price and you fill your whole house with lights and it's so beautiful to go down the block of your street and you see all these houses that have lights. But there is no light in the world without Christ. And when you reveal, when you remove Christ, Christmas is about a twinkle light. It does not light this world. It may be beautiful, but this world is in darkness. And people don't comprehend that darkness. He was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. And again, if Christ did not come, then we have no light and the world remains in darkness. As the world removes Christ and Jesus from anything that you see and hear, they also remove light from anything that's public in this world. You understand it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace came by Jesus Christ. If Jesus had not come, then grace would not have come upon mankind. God is gracious, but grace is poured out upon man because of Jesus Christ. If He had not come, there is no grace for me, which means I must pay the price for my own sin. There is no grace offered, which means the wages of sin is death would be passed on upon all men, for all have sinned and all will die. There is no eternal life. You cannot have life without grace, for by grace are you saved, which means without grace there is no salvation for any man. And as I already mentioned, truth. Again, let's go back to the way the world is. As the world begins to remove Jesus Christ from Christmas, as they begin to remove Jesus Christ from anything that you see publicly, you will watch proportionally as Christ is removed, so is truth removed. And so as you look at the world and you see the condition of our world, I want you to understand that because Christ is the, is the center of truth, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. If Christ did not come, then there is no truth. And mankind can lie, they can steal, they can cheat. Whatever helps them to get ahead is proper for them. And they really believe that. Therefore, truth becomes very arbitrary, becomes very subjective. And what's right for me is not necessarily right for you, and what's right for you is not necessarily right for me. And so we begin to define truth based upon what I think is truth. And if you take it to its end, you have an entire religious system that believes it's right to kill people. And the reason it's right to kill people is because that's what they think is truth. Because everyone comes up with their own truth. And grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. As you remove Him, you remove grace. If you remove Him, you remove truth from every public part of this world. Are you seeing that? And so what difference does it make that Jesus Christ actually comes? Does it matter that we celebrate Christmas with Santa Claus and reindeer? Does it matter? Well, my point is, as you trivialize Christmas, if that's the way that, to, that the word is supposed to be used, as you trivialize that, word, that, that part of Christmas, then what are the consequences? Of course, you're beginning to see more and more of the consequences of removing Christ all the time. But it doesn't matter. It really matters. Because grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now this is huge. I don't think I'm reading into this. If Jesus Christ had not come, then the Holy Spirit will not come upon us. We cannot have the Holy Spirit without Christ's birth in, 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 in Bethlehem. There's a reason for that. Again, in the Old Testament, when Christ had not come, the Holy Spirit came upon men, but He could not indwell men. And Jesus said, The Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you. I will send to you from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come. In other words, Christ had to come. He had to come on this earth. And then He had to leave so that He could send the Comforter to us. Friends, if the Comforter did not come, this changes who we are and what we do. 
This changes everything. It becomes a big, big problem. For instance, in, in Romans chapter 7, it's called the Great Defeat chapter. Paul is just reminiscing about the problems that are in his life. In me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to, to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. He goes on and he explains, Who will deliver me from the body of this death? I am in a terrible situation. Who's going to help me with this body of death? And he says this, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now again, this is chapter 8 is about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 8 is about there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But chapter 7 ends with the promise that I thank God Who's going to deliver me from the body of the death? The answer to that question is found in verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. If Christ had not come, I want you to listen to me carefully, you have no hope of a better life. If we take this into our families and into our homes, as a man, you can't love your wife with God's type of love. You can't do it. There is no agape love without Jesus Christ. The agape love comes through the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit can't come, then you cannot love your wife with agape love. You cannot overcome addiction in your life without Jesus Christ. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But that saying is, if you can't walk in the Spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're not just talking about Jesus Christ's death on the cross giving us a hope for the future. We are also talking about Jesus Christ coming to this earth gives us the present, the glorified life that we can live right now. The blessing of being able to overcome sin and addiction in our life right now. If you remove Christ from your life, you have very little hope of having any peace in your life, of having any joy in your life, of having any ability to have victory in your life, your life will be very much defeated from the very beginning of your life. And you will not have any hope for any victory. We have lots of people in this world who started off with Jesus Christ, but they begin in their life to reject Him and remove Him from their life, they don't need Him anymore in their life. And as they remove Him from their life, their life begins to fall into decay, into addiction, into helplessness, into hopelessness. And they get into all kinds of problems in their life as they remove Christ from their life. And friends, you see it as an illustration in America of what's happening in America as we remove Christ from America. As we remove Him from everything that's important in our life, you see what's taking place in America today. But frankly, if you remove Him from your life personally, the same thing happens. It is as if He were not born. And if Christ was not born, what happens to you in your life? If you trivialize Jesus Christ at Christmas time, but if you trivialize Him in your life, day by day, the same thing happens. You begin to lose touch with what is truth, and what you're telling yourself is true is wrong. You're lying to yourself. Without Christ, truth becomes error. There is no grace in your life. There's no grace in your life to other people. If Christ becomes trivialized in your life, you have very little hope. Again, if we've been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing that your old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. From henceforth we should not serve sin. Think about it. What does that mean? It is only because of His death, it's only because of His resurrection that this takes place. If we don't have the death, if we don't have the resurrection, we don't have this. Which means if we don't have the birth, we don't have the death. We don't have the resurrection, we don't have this. Which means our old man is not crucified. Which means that the body of sin is not destroyed. Which means from henceforth, we will serve sin. 
And it doesn't have to be just nationally. It can be individually, as I've mentioned. As we begin to remove Him from our life, that's what happens. We begin to serve sin. Any questions? You'll be tested on this in the future. You may not be tested upon it with me, but you'll be tested on it from the Lord for sure. Please understand that you could not be conformed to His image. You could not understand the Word of God. The national man received not the things of the Spirit of God. You will not be able to understand the Bible. You'll read it. You won't understand it. You'll read it. You won't understand it. Reading the Bible will just be something you do because your folks told you to do it. You'll check off some list. But if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling you, if the Holy Spirit's not controlling you, that's not going to be true in your life. You'll be missing, of course, the New Testament because the New Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ. From the beginning of Matthew to the end of the book of Revelation, you won't have the New Testament. You'll be living strictly with the Old, the Old Testament. The problem with the Old Testament, of course, the, the people in the Old Testament couldn't keep it. No one could keep it. Oh, they kept it. They tried to keep it. No, they couldn't. Peter stood up and says, Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers or we were able to bear? We couldn't keep that law. That's what Peter's saying in Acts 15. We couldn't keep it. And of course, if you are without Christ, if we're without the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to keep that law either. You're not going to be able to keep the Old Testament at all. We wouldn't have a high priest. The fact that Jesus Christ was born is important because... He was touched with a feeling of our infirmities. He was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Why? Because he was in human flesh. He was the God-man. He became man. He came to this earth. He became a man. And as a man, he was tempted at all points like as we are. Because he became a man, that's why we have a high priest. There was a time, again, if Jesus Christ hadn't come, it would be very similar to the Old Testament, but if Jesus Christ hadn't come, then God would love you, but you wouldn't know it. God would want you to be saved, but you couldn't be saved. And you would go through your life, your whole life, with a God in heaven who created you. That's true. He did create you. Who gave you an Old Testament you couldn't keep. But you could not have any fellowship with Him. Ever. Ever. There would be no fellowship between you and God. If Christ had not come. There could not be a heaven where you dwelt with God if Christ had not come. We would not have a comforter. Again, the Bible says, I will pray the Father, He will give you another comforter. Now please understand, there's a reason why He says another, because the first comforter was Jesus Christ. The second comforter was the Holy Spirit. And again, as I mentioned, the Holy Spirit could not come if Christ had not come. He could not come to abide with you forever if Christ had not come. But you would not have a comforter. We were up in Duluth at a, at a funeral here last, last week for Peggy's cousin. And what a sweet, sweet gal uh, who loved the Lord. Just lived for the Lord. She had leukemia for 20 years. Really rough, really rough time. Her mom gave her a bone, bone marrow transplant. For 19 years she had this transplant. But boy, even with the transplant, she went downhill. She was very weak in her life. <laughs> There was a doctor that came up from Mayo Clinic to Duluth and he spoke at the funeral. And he was just saying, he says, does, does anyone comprehend this? It was just plain wrong. It's just plain wrong for her to have to go through that. You think about all that she had to go through in those 20 years of leukemia. It's just plain wrong. Anyone agree with me that when I say that? And he, he said that, but then he said this. If it weren't for Christ, if it weren't for Christ, then everything is wrong. But that changes everything. Because Jeannie was not just a sick human in a sick body. She was also a spirit, a living soul that had a relationship with Christ that made her extremely strong. And her daughter could have stood up and talked about her mom and her daughter had some real struggles in her life. But her mom was her best friend. And this daughter was not bitter at God at all. 
because she saw in her mom a power and a strength that's just not capable of having without Christ, that you just cannot have, going through everything that her mom went through and all the sufferings, that it just wasn't possible without Jesus Christ. And so this gal just was so thankful that she had the Lord Jesus Christ, that she had this. Again, if in this life only have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. Listen, that verse is talking about the resurrection. But if there is no birth, we don't even have hope in this life. Talk about miserable. <laughs> we don't even have hope in this life without the birth of Christ. The coming of Christ includes the death, burial, and resurrection. If he wasn't born, he couldn't have died. If he hadn't died, there would be no eternal life. If he hadn't lived, there'd be no peace, no joy. The last point. The birth of Christ brings future glory. I want you to consider this. As I mentioned to you in the very beginning, worship begins at the birth of Christ. That's where worship begins. Let me explain how that works. Because some of you look at that and say, well, pastor, how do you get that? Where do you get that from? Well, right here, this is where I get it from. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. This is the glory, the future glory of Christ. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. Do you know why he says that? Why that happens? Because he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. That is the verse just before that verse, right? Because that verse comes before this verse, that's what the wherefore is all about. That's why we have future glory, is because of what Christ did in this verse. Because he took upon himself the form of a man. Because he was found in fashion as a man. Because he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the Christ. That is why he is exalted in the future. That's why we have worship. That's why we have glory. That's why in heaven we will glorify the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Glory begins, worship begins at the birth of Christ. If Christ had not been born, you will not have any future glory. If Christ has not been born, there will be no future worship. Friends, if Christ was not born... You snap your fingers, this church does not exist. There is not a church in this town that exists. There are no carols. There are no songs. <laughs> there is no praise to God. There's no praise songs. Because all of that is a be because of the birth. If Christ is not born, <laughs> then we're miserable. <laughs> we have no hope. You start thinking about what would it have been like if Christ had not been born, if he had not come, if he had not been born in Bethlehem. But, but, that's not true. He was born in Bethlehem. He did come to this earth. It is what Christmas is all about. He was born in a stable, in a manger in Bethlehem. He did die. He did rise from the dead. He is seated at the right hand of God. I do have forgiveness. I do have hope. I do have a high priest. <laughs> you think, Lord, I want to live again. Hey? I want to live again. I don't want our world to be like that. I don't want that kind of a world where Christ had not come, where we celebrate Christmas without Christ where we trivialize it and say it's not important. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter to me. I want to worship Christ who was born in Bethlehem at Christmas time. I want my family to come together over the Christmas story. I want Christmas to be the reason for the season because it makes more difference than anything on this earth if Christ had not been born. It changes everything. And so I sit here with eternal life, with the Holy Spirit living within me, with a family, with a church home, with people that come together in church on Sunday morning because we want to hear about Christ. Because we want to read about the New Testament. We want to hear about grace and truth. 
We want to understand glory. We want to see God's glory. We want to get a picture of what Christ has done. We want eternal life. And it's here. It's all here. It's all back again. We all came back again. Christ was born. And I trust you understand why it's so critical that we don't trivialize this. Why our favorite movies are not Santa Claus. Why our favorite movies are not the miracle of 34th Street. Why it's not about Santa Claus. Why it's about something far greater than that. Why there aren't movies at Christmas time about the birth of Christ. Why everything has to be about some miracle about Santa Claus. Why we trivialize it does not help us. (laughs) It just doesn't help us. It gives us a present without a future. It gives us a a happiness without any joy. I'd like to have you bow your heads and close your eyes as we just close in a word of prayer. But over the years I've preached hundreds, (laughs) probably probably a hundred different messages about Christmas over the years. And you come up with a thought. It's so tough. You preach the same message over and over and over and over again. You preach the same gospel, the same message of Christ. Make much of it, people. Make much of it. It is what Christmas is all about. It's what this world is all about with Christ. It's the glory. It's the glory of Christmas. If you are here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, please let me share with you that He came to this earth so He would die for your sins on the cross. That's not a small matter. It makes an eternal difference. It gives you a great hope, a great peace, a great joy. Folks in this church know Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's why we're here. But we get the privilege of being able to share with other people what Christ did when he came to this earth. Be able to share with people that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he gives us eternal life. Once again, we want to thank you for tuning into our program. It's been a delight to have you. I trust that you understand a little bit more about what Jesus Christ did for you when he died on the cross. Salvation is not something that you receive because you're born into a family or because you go to church or because you're good. Salvation is a free gift. But that gift has to be received. If you have not received it, we'd like to have you take some time to talk to God and ask Him that He might be your Savior. You understand that you are a sinner, that Jesus Christ died for you, that you can know that you have eternal life by putting your trust in Christ today.